here to talk about galvanized metal showers. This is a corrugated metal shower. There's a lot of videos and a lot of articles throughout the internet on how to do corrugated metal showers. I had a couple questions before I did this one and I thought it'd be a great time to make a video to supplement what I had read and see if there's some stuff that I can add to the whole topic of corrugated metal showers. So first off, um, if, you've, if you're watching this, you've probably decided to do a corrugate, corrugated metal shower. I'm doing two of them. That You'll see the one that's partially done. I wanted to catch the whole video, but I didn't. So let's get right to it. The first thing is, um, my concern was what to do at the bottom of the corrugated metal shower. When you get to the corrugated metal and you're here at the bottom, that's going to be either a raw edge, depending on where you cut the height of the metal, the raw edge is going to be at the bottom or the top. So here it is. I cut the raw edge at the top. Nevertheless, I didn't want the corrugated metal to meet the tile, partially because the um, tile's got a slope to it and partially because I was afraid it would rust down there. So I knew I'd have to caulk the metal. So instead of um, just putting the, t the metal right down to the tile, I used this PVC board right here. I got it from Home Depot. It's an inch wide by four inches tall. And I took the PVC board and I put it down first. I leveled it and shimmed up either side so it was level. Turned out this was the lowest side, so I shimmed the right side up. And then I scribed it, which is taking a pencil on top of something flat and drawing a line, which the line then matches exactly the curvature of this tile. If you've ever watched cabinet installs, that's the way you do cabinets too. So I scribed it and then I brought it over and used the jigsaw to cut to that scribe line. Then you get this great little gap. The gap is maybe an eighth of an inch all the way through. That's been caulked with clear silicone. Now this is level and it's flat. So when I put the metal down on top, I can set the metal directly on here. The metal is perpendicular. This is a vertical surface. This is a horizontal surface. Everything's great. Another one that I was curious about was how people um, cut the width. Now, I think these sheets were about $12 a sheet. So I made the decision to just overlap and not worry about cutting this, the width. So basically ripping this down to a width. So one of these sheets is two feet, overlaps quite a bit of the second sheet. And I'm just not gonna worry about that. For 12 bucks, I just said it's not worth my time to try to cut it and polish up the edge and try to save the extra piece and use it somewhere else. So this shower used three pieces on the back wall. It's five feet wide. It uses two pieces on each side wall. Uh, this is a 32 inch shower and it goes a little further past the, the shower curb here. Um, the corners, I'll show you a piece of the corners in just a minute. Uh, so hold that thought. I did not do so well yet on my um, um, Uscutcheon for the shower faucet. I have to do some more cleanup of this foam right here. I just decided rather than put a puck of wood or a puck of PVC here, I decided I'd just put foam behind here. So the, there's a, a piece of foam that you buy when you buy the corrugated metal that's meant for sealing the gable ends or the, uh, the uh, ends of the roof. And it's a piece of corrugated foam that fits directly. So I use pieces of foam under here. I also, at the top, use PVC trim here too. And I use the corrugated foam under here. So the foam sits up under here. There's a sharp edge on the top of the galvanized metal. Uh, you won't ever touch that because this foam is in the way. And then I trimmed it all out with this PVC. I have yet to caulk this with white caulk up here, uh, sink the nails in, and then countersink the nails. I don't plan on painting it. I just plan on sinking the nails in and put some white caulk on top of that. So uh, the quick steps, I did the floor first. We'll see this in the other shower. We're going to pause the video in a second, and then we'll go look at how the other shower is progressing. But I did the floor first, the entire shower pan and everything. Then I did PVC around here. Then I put the galvanized metal on top of the PVC. Then I put the trim around the top. And lastly, I put in the uh, shower curtain rod here too. And don't forget, before you get too far, you need blocking behind these to mount the shower curtain rods in. So you don't want these to screw into drywall. They've got to screw into two by fours. So hopefully that answers some questions. Let's pause the video. Okay, so now we're looking at the other shower. This one is partially finished and you can see more construction details, how I did the galvanized metal work and what went on behind it. So first thing is um, you can certainly use um, Duroc 
and I can give you lots of reasons why I didn't use Duroc, but um, I think this is going to be fine. One of the reasons is it's this, these are the kids' basement showers, and I, you know, they'll be going off to college, and I suspect at that point the metal will be kind of in bad shape and everything, and I'll want to tile the showers anyway. So I didn't put the time and expense into putting Duroc all the way up. However, that said, if you look down here, the sheetrock is here right on the 2x4s. The green mildew resistant sheetrock is here on the 2x4s. Below that, and up above the shower liner, so here's the shower liner, the rubber liner, uh, there's Duroc right here. So the Duroc is higher than this PVC board. So if water gets underneath here, it hits the Duroc and stays under the liner. If water gets on top of the, if it comes in between the corrugated metal that's going to sit right here on this PV surface, it goes down and stays above, uh, below the drywall. So really there's not a lot of water trouble here. If there is and it becomes mildewy in four or five years, as I say, this is going to be replaced anyway. So this is really a short term job. If you're going to do this long term, use Duroc. I don't, it's probably worth the expense and the time for you. Uh, I talked over there about the corners and the other shower, how I did the corners. This is corner flashing. Again, I got it from Home Depot. Um, I cut it to length. This is uh, 2.15 meters high. Uh, this stuff's so much easier in the metric system, by the way, if you're kind of a home handy person. Just try measuring stuff in the metric system. I think you'll love it. So 215 uh, centimeters high. Um, I did the cut on the top. And I set it right on here and I glued it. So I ran one bead of, of um, PL adhesive. This is the cheaper version, the PL Projects adhesive. I ran one bead of PL on either side of it and I pressed it right up in place and it stays right there. I did the same thing in the other corner over here. One bead of PL and it's all set. Uh, I put PL on these sides, these uh, PVC on the outsides of those, and then I cut these pieces of wood these are kind of my clamps, so uh, I just press the clamp in like that, and I do the same thing over here, and they press that to the outside, and they let that glue dry perfectly. This outside is held in, this long side is held in by these two side pieces, and I press the clamp down like that, and that helps to hold it on the side. These are now totally fastened in. These PVC strips are totally fastened in. So now, what do I have? But I've got a waterproof floor, which there are tons of videos on how to do your shower pan. So I've got a waterproof floor, and then I've got this about three and a half inch high, very nice flat surface on which to put the corrugated metal. So next step in here will be to uh, line the back wall with corrugated metal. So let's go take a look at how we cut the corrugated metal. All right, welcome to my messy workshop. I'd love to tell you that this is normally clean, but well, no, it's a workshop. So here's my saw station. I've got a 10 inch sliding compound miter saw here. There's probably a lot of ways to cut this and I wondered which would be the best way, but I took off my normal blade and I replaced it with this blade that came right out of the tile saw. This came out of, uh, you saw that I was doing the tile work. It's right out of the, the um, tile wet saw. Same arbor size. It's a 5 8 inch arbor. Same t uh, 10 inch diameter blade, uh, which works out great. So now I'm going to take my measuring tape that I mentioned earlier, my metrical measuring tape. And these are all 215 centimeters. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to get my 215. Now I'm cutting at least two sheets at once. Today I'm going to cut three sheets. This is the four sheets actually. This is going to be the back wall and some side stuff. It's just easier to cut multiple sheets. You got to do it anyway. Everything's much more rigid that way. So here goes. I'm going to set my sheets at 215. Now if you remember I'm putting the top trim in also so if I'm off by a little bit the ceiling does waver around a bit. Uh, so if I'm off by a little bit I don't have to worry about the metal going all the way up to the ceiling. I've got plenty of, um, can take that up with the trim and that foam that's in the top. So uh, hold on and I'll get some ear protection. So I'm going to slide the saw all the way out because I need every bit of its travel to get this done.
Okay, and the saw can do 12 inches, so I'm going to flip the whole stack over. If you have another way to do this, that's great, but I'll tell you, the diamond wheel does an excellent job of making a smooth cut. I don't know that a jigsaw or a bandsaw or any of that kind of stuff would do nearly as well. So, as I said, this is my second one of these, so I'm going to go with what, what's been working. consumable cut off the wheel. It looks like I got a little tiny bit of little tiny bit of one piece here that didn't want to come off. So anyway, here's my cutting. You can see the edge that that leaves. There's a sharp edge there, so I'm gonna watch out for that. But that's gonna go on the top. Alright, let's go back over to the shower. Okay, so we're back in the bathroom. I've got these sheets here. Of course, that top is sharp, so we're going to watch out not to tear up the ceiling. One of the kind of interesting things about this is the corrugations are different when you get to this last edge. They're not, they're not bent down to the same angle as the middle corrugations. So when you do overlap these, you're going to see that there's a little bit of a gap in the overlap. And we'll talk about that in a little bit after I get one of these sheets up. But right now what I was going to do is show how I glue these to the wall. Uh, you could run a bead of caulk all the way, a bead of adhesive all the way down, but that's going to be a lot of adhesive. So what I've done instead, what I've found works really well, is to put a dollop of adhesive on. So if you come a little closer with the camera, I'll show how I've been doing it. So this is the outer edge. In here, there, we're going to do go one, two, three, four, five. So every other one of the corrugations. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Then the next row, I just do the middle. So it's one, two, three, four. And I kind of wiggle back and forth on each, and I put, a, I cut a nice big area of the caulk gun, so I get a big blob of caulk. So that's going to make up for a lot of variation in the wall because 2x4s are never straight and it's going to make up for, uh, it's going to hold in lots of places on this corrugated metal. I didn't want this to sound all tinny and hollow if you bump it in the shower. So if you, the, one, the one time I did try doing a full line of caulk down the whole metal uh, panel very little of it adhered to the wall when I peeled it back. This way, I found I had really great adhesion and the uh, panel stuck beautifully. Now I'm yapping away here and I missed one. So I don't know that anybody's going to really care, but I'm yapping away while I'm talking. That was supposed to be there. This one's supposed to be out here. I'm yapping away while I'm talking. I have to think about that, right? So here I am at the bottom. I'll probably do the outer ones even though at the bottom. Here we go. Now, another thing, uh, so I mentioned the, um, I mentioned the flashing from Home Depot. It's, it's a drip edge. So one side of this flashing is flat, very nice and flat. The other side has a drip edge cut into it. Now I put both the drip edges inward on the long back wall and I did that on purpose. This corrugation will not sit beautifully against that drip edge if the wall isn't perfectly flat, uh, perfectly perpendicular. So I put that on the inside because I knew I would have enough overlap that I could make up for the difference. So here goes the panel. I'm going to set the bottom in place. And I'm not going to go to the wall with it right here. All right. So I'm, I'm a little, I left about here, it's about three quarters of an inch of space which I already know because I measured what the overlap is. There's a cool way you can do that to figure out what your overlap is going to be before you stick this all the way in place. You can take your cuttings that we just saw from when we were cutting these to length, 
And you can put your second and third and find out where these are all going to overlap and how they're going to sit together. I already did that. Uh, I, I certainly could walk over. If we pause the video, I'll go walk over and grab the cuttings and show you. All right, so these are the little off cuts that we had before. And these are what I use to plan where the overlap is going to be. So that's going to end up in the farthest part, and this one's going to end up here. So I know how much overlap I'm going to have here and how much I'll have in this corner based on these pieces. So that's really how this will work. So now I know exactly where that one has to be to get in the corner. And I know where, it, where it's going to end up on this uh, drip edge that I mentioned earlier so I can get this to stay shut. So the rest of the shower is really the same way. So you look at the top, I've got plenty of height. The trim will work out great. I'm going to put up the second and third pieces on this back wall. I'll come over and do the exact same thing on the end walls of the shower. Of course, when I get to uh, Keen, people are going to say, why didn't I put that panel in first on the left? And that's a mistake I just made. So really, this panel should be over there on the left, and I'm going to move it after we're off camera because I don't want the water to be spraying into the crack. I want it to fly over the edge of the crack. So really, the, the back one should be first, the middle one second, and the right one third. So your shower spray uh, blasts past rather than onto. So when I get to this wall, I'm going to measure out my cut for the drop ear elbow up here and for the shower faucet. I'll put those up just the same way. I really didn't have to um, press anything. When I get to the wall here, I'll tape it and I'll put some extra dollops of glue behind the corrugated metal to hold this flat. And then when I'm done, I'll take clear caulk. I'll run the whole edge around the bottom. I'll run up all the sides and I'll run the overlaps also. I'll peel those back, run a bead of caulk in there, press them forward. It's clear caulk, you won't see it. And if you get it after about a day, you can rub any extra off with your fingers and it looks really good. So that is basically it for a uh, corrugated metal shower. If you guys have questions, put them in the comments down below. I'm happy to answer them.